Hello and welcome to Two Chairs, One Technology. It's a video blog by Roden Schwartz about interesting aspects of LTE and LTE Advanced. With me today I have Andreas Rosler. He's the technology manager for Roden Schwartz. So Andreas, I'm hearing a lot about the spectrum crunch that's going on. What's the deal with that? Well, Chris, spectrum crunch generally means the shortage of wireless spectrum available to network operators to deploy mobile broadband services such as LTE. Um, as you notice, the adoption of smartphones and tablets everywhere has uh, led to an explosion of mobile data traffic. And the only way to overcome this is to allocate more spectrum for mobile broadband such as LTE. So what are the network operators going to do about it? Well, there's a mixture of strategies. So first of all, there would be uh, the chance to uh, acquire spectrum by buying it from other licensees. Um, the second would be like uh, merging with competitors. We have seen that recently, uh, trying uh, companies trying to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, the third and more easy part is of course looking in the own spectrum portfolio to see which type of spectrum could be used for mobile broadband services such as LTE. And uh, let me use an, an actual example to, to uh, further line that out, what's, what that is. So as I said, all major operators investigate their options to increase the amount of spectrum that is available to them. The overall goal for all carriers by acquiring more spectrum, the one or the other way, is to expand their LTE capacity to encounter the expected capacity crunch. With the newly defined LTE advanced feature that is called carrier aggregation, service providers worldwide are enabled to aggregate carriers that reside, for instance, in different frequency bands. This provides the carriers with much more flexibility and is the way out of the spectrum fragmentation. So the hunt is open for more spectrum and all options are on the table. What I show here is a recent news that uses the following headline. I quote, FCC to approve AT&T's WCS spectrum plans. Let's analyze this example a little further. First, some more information on the WCS spectrum. The wireless communication service is a total of 2 times 15 megahertz from 2305 to 2320 and 2345 to 2360 megahertz. The spectrum was first auctioned in 1997 with the requirement to provide substantial service by March 2014. For the 97 auction, four blocks were created, A through D, where blocks A and B are paired spectrum. Block C and D is unpaired spectrum. Blocks A and B were auctioned using major economic areas as a geographical basis and 52 licenses were issued. Blocks C and D were auctioned based on regional economic gr area grouping comprising 12 licenses, but six licenses are enough to cover the entire continental United States. Major licensee is AT&T as the news displayed earlier already suggests. As we can see, blocks C and D, or better, the entire WCS spectrum, surrounds the so-called satellite digital audio radio service spectrum that is, for instance, used by Sirius XM to provide its services to its customers. This puts initially a lot of restriction on the usage of these frequencies, for instance, for output powers by towers and mobile handsets, which caused the delay in using the spectrum for wireless communication. Only the joint proposal submitted by AT&T and Sirius XM in June 2011 on lowering these boundaries, which the previously shown news is all about, helped to change the FCC's mind on opening up the spectrum to be used for mobile broadband applications such as LTE. Passing the regulatory hurdle is only the initial step. Now the third generation partnership project, the standardization body behind LTE, will be tasked that these frequencies become an official frequency band, so in the next months we may see a related work item. Let's review quickly what is impacting a frequency band's definition for 3GBP in general. So first, there's a channel raster for LTE that is fixed with 100 kilohertz. That means the carrier frequency is an integer multiple of 100 kilohertz. With that said, the carrier frequency is generally designated by the EUTRA absolute radio frequency number, short EARFCN. The EARFCN is in the displayed range. The relationship between carrier frequency for downlink and uplink is given by the displayed equation. If we want to conduct now on the potential channel numbers for the WCS spectrum, we need to recall the frequency range that is shown here for uplink and downlink. With that, 
We also uh, know the duplex distance, which is given with 40 megahertz. And looking at the latest 3GBP specification showing the officially supported frequency bands, we could check on the next available channel numbers for downlink and uplink, which are 9,660 uh, towards 27,660. This is assumption leads to the conclusion that the potential channel number range for a frequency band in 3GBP that supports the WCS spectrum could be for the downlink 9,660 to 9,810 and for the uplink 27,660 to 27,810. Now, if there are design engineers that have to develop mobile handsets supporting the future frequency band at 2.3 gigahertz, they can be supported already today with their testing needs, even before 3GBP has completed uh, that work on the frequency band. The Roden Schwartz CMW500 wideband radio communication tester intended for design and manufacturing of wireless handsets makes this possible. The basic version that I have here with me supports frequencies from 70 megahertz to 3.3 uh, gigahertz, but can be easily extended to 6 gigahertz. Uh, today, all official frequency bands um, in 3GBP are integrated and supported. However, the function that I'm referring to is what we call a user band definition, which is exactly what an engineer would look for while standardization still works on the required details. Let me show you on the instruments what I mean. So what you basically see here is the LTE MMI, the man-to-machine interface. Um, where I actually would like to focus today on the cell setup. You see here we can pick the operating band, the uh, uh, mode of LTE, and then we can access channel numbers or frequencies. We can input either or, and there is the bandwidth, of course. So if we want to now access the user band definition, we could either go into the config menu down here at the right the bottom um, and go into the RF settings and pick on the operating band and see that all bands are supported, the user band definition, and that gives us access to all um, uh, these nice numbers, channel and frequency numbers. I don't want to do that in that configuration menu. I just want to use it, the uh, uh, general MMI for it. So as you can see, my, my band selection disappeared, and instead of that, I have the band definition available here. So if I click that now, I get a nice dialog which actually asked me for the uplink downlink separation, which is basically the duplex distance that I was referring to earlier. So I need to click in here and I set it to 40 megahertz. Um, then you see the channel uh, raster with 100 kilohertz as said, that's fixed by LTE. We can't access or change that if we wanna be standard compliant. And then we need to pick a band indicator. Uh, the latest spec shows 28 frequency bands for um, FDD. So we just pick 29 here as an, e as an example, just hit enter. And then it comes to the downlink definition for channel and frequencies and uplink definition for channel and frequencies. So we just uh, realized that in the latest spec for the downlink, um, a channel number of 9,660 is uh, the next available one. So I enter that here and that my downlink frequency started at 2,345. So I enter that here, as you can see, and of course, I need to define my maximum, which was 9,810 um, as a channel number. So if I enter that here, you can see nicely my downlink uh, s uh, 15 megahertz with the lowest frequencies 2,345 up to 2,360. Now, the last thing I have to do is for the uplink. And here I only have to enter the channel number, which was 27,100, enter. And you see nicely, it took everything over. So my lowest frequency my for the uplink is 2,305. And for the uh, uh, upper part is 2,320, compromising 15 megahertz of spectrum. So I can close that now, and now my band is available. Um, in order to demonstrate that we actually can generate on that frequency, I just would put a little higher power for the downlink in here, which is minus 50 dBm per 15 kilohertz over a 10 megahertz bandwidth. So I switch just my cell on. And in the same time, I will using uh, uh, the integrated measurement functionality that you see here, general purpose, which I already activated. So I pick task, um, go on um, GPRF, as you can see here. So we go into that uh, screen, and now we are going to measure 
our own signal that we generate in the downlink that I just activated and using an FFT uh, spectrum analyzer here. So quickly configuring that um, from, from that point of view, we need to set the frequency range, which was 3045 for the downlink. Um, I said I'm expecting um, about minus 50 with a 12 dB uh, crest factor, which is obviously um, uh, the standard uh, uh, crest factor that I have in an OFDM signal. And we just give it a try and we can adjust it a little bit later. Um, of course, input overdriven. Um, let me see what we just did in the signaling screen. Oh, of course, minus 22. That's what I'm expecting. So see, that's a demonstration. We go in here and just changing that to minus 22. And there we go. And here's nicely my spectrum for my downlink signal. The things that you're bumping up see here is basically synchronization signal or the system information blocks that we are transmitting in downlink. But basically you see here we can generate now or we're generating right now a downlink signal at that 2345 uh, uh, megahertz, which is our user band definition uh, for the WCS spectrum. That's probably gonna be uh, soon a new um, free GBP frequency band. So, so far the instrument um, and the usage and the user band definition, back to you, Chris. Um, Andreas, thanks for that explanation. And uh, everyone, don't miss the next episode of Two Chairs, One Technology, where we explore more interesting aspects of LTE and LTE Advanced, brought to you by Roden Schwartz.